Hey everyone, I hope all of you are doing well and welcome to Kayan Al Bashar. So today, before we get started with the usual ramble, I need to make two announcements. The first one is kind of neutral, but the second one is good or bad, depending on how you look at it. But anyway, starting off with the neutral one, it's probably not going to be three videos this week, or at least I'm not going to be able to make three videos this week. This means that there's probably not going to be a video this Sunday. This is because I have some college deadlines coming up. And of course, college needs to take precedence over making videos. So I hope you guys can understand that. But this also leads a little bit into the second announcement, which is the good or bad one, which is that, well, originally I had planned for Kayan Al Bashar Grand Central Station even though it no longer holds that name actually, but I'm going to reveal that name in the cinematic video. But the originally I had planned this to be done this Sunday. Of course, now I'm not going to be uploading this Sunday because of college, so... Well, I've extended the, well, building period that I have by one more week. So the cinematic video is not going to be pushed back to Wednesday, but to next week Sunday. So this allows me two more videos actually to build. So that means that yes, that well ending of the Grand Central Station is going to be pushed back to next Sunday, but it is going to contain a lot more because I allow myself a lot more time to also build the adjacent area, I would say. So to basically sum up the announcements, I I'm not going to be able to upload or make a video for this Sunday because college deadlines and I highly advise all of you to not, you know, well, to just give precedence to college or just any kind of studying. And the second announcement is just that I'm going to extend the building period that I gave myself by two more videos. So it's going to be fun and well, I think the one that is probably the, well, let's just say the most angry at the second announcement is my PC. Because my PC has probably been crying ever since the second episode. Because by then it was already, I think the station was then already, um, I let me think, uh, I think 60k pieces. I think by now it's already closer to 100, so... Yeah, Grand Central Station is, uh, I think, one third of the amount of pieces that Tianopolis has. So, uh, whoops. I mean, not whoops, because I already intended it to be the largest build. I just didn't intend it to be this large. But anyway, going back to the footage with the announcements being done. So you might be wondering, what am I building? So... I wanted a centerpiece for the square in front of the Grand Central Station, even though it's no longer called that, but I'm still going to call it that in the videos leading up to the cinematic video, because I think that's the name that we have known it by now for the longest. So to call it a different name might confuse some of you guys and might make me mess up, which is probably the main reason. But anyway, so I wanted a centerpiece for the square and then I have been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Revelations lately. So yeah, I wanted to make a Roman victory column and uh, yeah, I wanted to do that. So I made it and I'm actually very happy with it because it's kind of a stark difference or a sharp difference between the station and then the square or at least the column because the station has, well, pops of color. Like it has red all throughout the building. And then the column has no color beyond marble or at least marble white. I think most of the column actually, well, there's no marble pieces. Of course, there's concrete pieces and plaster pieces that are being used for this. But I just think of like marble when building such things, I mean, the concrete pieces to me just look a little bit too much like marble to not be used as marble. At least in Kayan Al Bashar, I used the concrete pieces as marble. So, uh, 
yeah, is this another way of like, not everything in Kayan al Bashar is what it seems. The marble is just plain old concrete. But anyway, I want this column, just as I said already, to kind of function as a centerpiece so that the square isn't completely dependent on the station. And actually later on, I kind of separate the station from the square so that the square has its own identity a little bit more. And yeah, this column really just helps with that. Also, it just adds another nice thing to look at when looking at the station because even with this column and I've actually gone to this column or not gone to this column, but uh, redesigned the column a lot of times. You saw that already, but first off, it was a lot, well, thicker or at least wider. I'm very happy with that it now is a little bit more slender and actually looks like a column instead of like a, well, I don't know what it originally looked like. It was just too white. Now it actually just looks like a column and not something else. I mean, I'm not sure what else it would have looked like, but um, it just didn't look like a column. But as I said, I wanted to make the station kind of separate from the actual square that it's in front of. So that's where another inspiration from Assassin's Creed Revelations came in, which is from, I'm going to butcher the name, but I think you guys already know that I'm going to do that with every name, but in Assassin's Creed Revelations, the Hagia Sophia, yes, I am 100% sure I mispronounced that, but the cathedral has this kind of courtyard, or at least broken up courtyard in front of it with this sort of gallery that encloses it. So I wanted to also build such a thing for the Grand Central Station. So that's basically what I built. I also took huge references from that courtyard in like the building style. So the gallery is not going to be heavily decorated. It's still going to, well, it's going to be two sides or at least two arms hugging this sort of courtyard. This arm, I think by the end is 13k pieces. Yes, a simple gallery, 13k pieces. Also, um, I this just came to mind, but in the last video I talked about that iron elevator. I've deleted that one and I haven't made a blueprint of it. Because uh, you might have seen it in the last videos, but I usually when I make a big building, I keep like the spare parts or just the parts in general on the map. So like off to the side, you see another tower because this is just a safety or precaution. If I like ever mess up a tower, I could just as easily delete that tower and copy the original one. And then of course make it so that it looks like the one tower that I messed up. So I deleted those just because, well, I was finished with the building. So I forgot to actually make a blueprint of the iron elevator. I mean, we still have the wooden one, so it's not that we are missing out too much. But anyway, yes, this gallery again has a vaulted ceiling and I, I'm almost sure that a vaulted ceiling isn't that prevalent in Islamic architecture, but then again, it is kind of, well, right for the time period that I take Kayan al Bashar from, which is, let's say, medieval to late Renaissance. That's like the architecture styles that I try to use, or at least the time period for the Islamic architecture that I try to use. So, it might be right for the time period, not for the style of building that I'm building. But I just like the vaulted ceilings and later on, I built something that's again, maybe not right for Islamic architecture of like, or actually Islamic style, because it's not really architecture, but it still fits in with the time period, I would say. And uh, I just couldn't find another way of building what I wanted to build. But yeah, halfway through, or yeah, sort of halfway through this video, we will actually flip to the other side of the building because uh, I'm a squirrel, so I can't keep my attention on one place uh, for a long time. 
So yeah, halfway through this video, we will flip to the other side. And then I think actually at the end of the building, I will build the, well, not really building, but the thing that also doesn't really fit in with Kayan's al Bashar's Islamic architecture. But um, I mean, it still looks pretty and it fits with what I am building on the other side, which I mean, it's no surprise. The other side also like ended up way larger than it was intended to be. But uh, back to the gallery. So, well, it works to separate the square from the station. Otherwise, yes, you would have a giant square to the front of the station. And this is where I stand with uh, squares. I don't like massive squares, actually. <laughs> I mean, I know that massive squares can be quite impressive. But, especially with how I built, I tend to have very, well, it's very difficult for me to fill up a massive square. Like I want my buildings to look lively and look like there's actually something living there, at least with let's say homes or squares or any kind of like public area. And with a massive square, it is intimidating, it is impressive, but I just can't fill that up. Like I like my squares to be a little bit more smaller and compact because then I can fill it up with let's say market stalls and such unless I want to build a huge market of course but that's not going to happen in Kayan al Bashar because I would have no use for that market. I mean not that I've used for that column but uh, the column looks nice. A massive market would just I don't know I think it would just look too chaotic. I mean Everything in Kayan al Bashar so far is kind of chaotic, but I like to think of it as chaos in a good way because, in a way, it does feel like it's planned out. Also, quickly noting back to the victory column or the Roman victory column, yes, I did not intend to go back to, well, ancient or classical civilizations as soon as I did. I just thought, like, well, first of all, Assassin's Creed. Or Revelations is a huge part in why this victory column is here, but uh, I mean, it just fits in with the, well, building. I mean, not really with the, um, well, most of the building is like Moroccan style, and then this gallery is, well, Turkish or Ottoman style. So it kind of fits in because, I mean, Istanbul was for a long time Constantinople, and this might be a little bit controversial but I like the name Constantinople actually a lot more than Istanbul because I mean not to say that Istanbul is a bad name I just think Constantinople has a little bit more of like an impressive sound to it like Constantinople just I don't know just sounds a little bit more impressive Istanbul sounds too nice <laughs> that's weird to have a name that is at least in my opinion, a little bit too nice sounding. I mean, with all the history that went on in, well, Istanbul right now, well, not right now, but went on in Istanbul or formerly Constantinople, I just, I like the name Constantinople a lot more. I mean, yeah, let's move on before I anger anyone. But anyway, so the gallery, I did close it up on one side. Just because, well, I fenced it off on the majority to, again, separate the station from the actual square. But I also closed off a little bit because, well, to have it completely fenced off is was just a little bit too much. So in the end, I when it basically made contact with the actual station building, I bricked it up a little bit so that it looks like it's flowing nicely into the building and is actually a part of the building. But now that we have flipped over to the other side of the Grand Central Station, I am building a harbor. This was originally intended to be like a, let's say, a airship stop or something like that. Almost like a bus terminal, I would say. But um, yeah, I turned it into a harbor just because the Grand Central Station, like to have like a tiny bus ter, well not bus, but airship terminal. It just it would feel too small and I take 
every opportunity to make a build massive. So, uh, yeah. I mean, this is still uh, Islamic architecture, but uh, we end this video with something that is uh, not. <laughs> but I'm really happy with uh, just changing it up. Like, this was originally intended to be a lot smaller, but it is still intended to be the entrance and the spawn point of all the guests of Kayan al-Bashar. Which kind of worries me because, uh, I mean, I already dropped uh, somewhat around 20 FPS while building this place. What will happen if I have guests in Kayan al-Bashar? I mean, while well, we have a history with like planned ghosts that guests create a lot of lag. So, uh, yeah, I'm worried with Kayan al-Bashar. What is going to happen? I mean, I might even have to resort to making a separate map for the central station or grand central station just so that I can build without lag. But I mean, it still runs smoothly. It's just that, yes, it dropped 20 FPS. So uh, that might not have been the best thing. But yeah, I also like the grand central station is basically a rectangle. So I wanted to actually avoid that while building the, well, harbor. So um, that's why I make rounded, I think you would call them docks. But uh, I also make them flying. Or at least floating. Because, I mean, I just... Um, I didn't want to build a lot of like floating islands. So instead I made floating docks. Or at least partially floating. I mean, it's still attached to this original island, but uh, also some parts of it are floating, because why not? And um, this is the only part of the harbor that has these, well, flower pots on it, just because, well, this was the original one, and uh, I think it looks a lot nicer here, because it has that rounded thing, and all the other parts of the harbor actually are a little bit more straight. They are kind of more like piers and this is like the original dock, I would say. Or at least the original one. So this one is a little bit more fancy than the rest. And this one is probably not where most airships dock. Most airships will dock on the later built piers. And by the end of today's episode, this is going to feel a little bit of a dead area. Because... Uh, yeah, you can already see we are halfway through the video and I'm still building walls. So that means we won't get to cluttering up this area this video. But I will probably do that in the next video and then, you know, next week I'm going to go into the airships because again, we're missing this Sunday because college deadlines. And I'm still going to say, yes, college will take precedence every time if it comes to that i'm really hopeful that you guys will understand this because well it's college i mean to not give that precedence is kind of a bad idea especially if you're paying for it but um yeah i've also thought of like well with what i'm thinking of to maybe include what i'm actually learning in college a little bit more into the videos or at least into the video that I'm planning. So you might see that come back. But at least not this week. This week we're just going to basically build up the base. But anyway, so here you can see a little bit of like the floating part that I intended. Where the actual docks or quays or piers actually extend further than the original floating island. So that's... Not only the islands float, but some of the buildings also float. So, I mean, so far, actually most of the buildings have been kind of realistic. Kind of, of course. Because while the islands and the entire concept of Kayan al-Bashar is complete fancy, there's no place where islands float. I mean, well, maybe if you propel a landmass into space, but then there wouldn't be anything living there unless it like creates its own gravity and such and atmosphere but uh, I want to make the well idea behind 
Kayan Al Bashar and like the floating islands, that's complete fancy. But I always try to keep the buildings realistic so that it's not like, oh yeah, this is complete fancy. There's nothing real to this place. Like there's like a sense of realism when you look at the buildings. I mean, yes, Kayan Al Bashar Grand Central Station is huge, but it's not completely unreasonable. I think there are bigger buildings than Kayan Al Bashar Grand Central Station. A lot more impressive buildings actually also. But uh, now we are building the sort of entrance to Kayan Al Bashar. I mean in well in the bigger picture the station is the entrance but this is the actual entrance for the guests which is basically just going to be some kind of canopy. You right now see a lot of pillars with well a lot of wooden beams. On the lower part of these pillars I end up removing those beams just because it just looks a little bit too temporary because of that. But the higher or the upper part on the middle beams with the flowers sticking out, that's going to be the same in the end. And here I kind of got inspired again by the a little bit more steampunky vibe that I wanted to give the station originally. I well, as you know, I ended up not going with that and uh, I ended up wrongfully or at least mistakenly deleting the iron elevator. But I did want to give it like, um, well, you have these uh, glass roofs in, well, I wanted to say industrial revolution area or era train stations, but I think train stations only started off in the industrial area or era. So that's kind of uh, a little bit uh, double or well, let's just move on because I'm going to mess up that sentence anyway. But in the end, I did go a little bit different, which I didn't actually record. But the well, the overall shape of this building is going to stay the same. It's just that I figured out that uh, the, the well, the um, arches weren't completely aligned so let's just say the left arch i yeah was a little bit more well to us right now or at least to you guys for viewing this than the right arch so you can already see that where with this uh, kind of support that yeah i needed to actually move the right arch and in the end i just redid the entire building yeah, or at least the entire roof but then I um, kind of uh, added the flags of Kayan Al Bashar. I do hope that later on we will get more like cloth or fabric pieces. I just hope we get a lot more pieces. I mean, I mean, I've already made a case for stained glass. Calado already made a case for well chain link fences or at least pieces to make a chain link fence. So uh, yeah, I think we all just want more pieces. So. Uh, yeah, I just also uh, saw the announcement from Frontier that there's going to be a Christmas update, which I kind of already guessed would be there because, uh, I mean, it's Christmas. If a company doesn't really, or at least a game company doesn't really do anything with Christmas, that's usually not, just not the case. Like, they usually are going to do something with Christmas. Either to, you know, get interest to the game or to sell things because, let's just face it, Christmas is just uh, a lot more, uh, let's just say, a time where you just buy a lot more. So uh, yeah, I kind of already expected there to be like something around Christmas. Whether that was a DLC or an update, we now know that it's going to be an update. With a lot of snow pieces, so... Uh, I mean, I can add a Christmas tree maybe to... Kayan Al Bashar Grand Central Station because the original plan is still to release Kayan Al Bashar to you guys as like a Christmas present or at least make like a version of Kayan Al Bashar available to you guys then. And maybe then like not monthly but at least uh, let's say quarterly to make a version of Kayan Al Bashar available to you guys on the workshop. So uh be prepared for crying PCs all around the world. I mean, yeah, most of you guys are actually all around the world. 
Lately, Thailand has been rising up in the analytics, actually. Thailand, I think, has pushed down the OS, so that was surprising to see. But uh, that's boring YouTube talk, so let's uh, continue what, with what we are building. So it's basically, um, yeah, I have no idea what it was. It did turn out to look a little bit like the reed houses that you find in Iraq. And that wasn't originally what I planned to build. I originally just planned to make those like, uh, well, in the original version they are of course glass roofs but here of course i'm not using any glass because um, well i'm using those lattice or woodwork uh, windows again however this building is not that very piece heavy because i mean most of the roof is uh well one roof piece is made out of um let's just say six pieces instead of a hundred yeah the domes uh, were actually not the biggest part of the building but uh, that's kind of surprising, because usually the domes are the biggest part of a building, when it comes to peace count. In Kayan al Bashar Grand Central Station, as you might have suspected, they are the smallest when it comes to peace counts. Most of the walls are actually the largest, because most of the walls are, well not completely custom, but most of the windows and such are completely custom. And then you have all the detail work. But, um, yeah, so in the end... I did create fences to kind of serve as the, well, fences to the entrance because of course you can't just walk into Kayan Al Bashar. Even if, let's say this is a real place, you probably won't be able to just walk into Kayan Al Bashar. You will probably have to go to, let's say, I think it's called customs or just some kind of security so that um, you're not bringing anything dangerous into Kayan Al Bashar. And that's basically what that place is. But I did end up removing mm, some of the wooden beams on the pillars just because it looked too temporary. But in the end it did end up looking pretty similar to how you guys saw it. Just a lot more, well not windows but a lot more holes in the roof. Just to make it a little bit airier. But anyway here is what the second thing is for today that isn't really Islamic architecture. I mean, beyond the, uh, well, Roman column, but uh, let's just say uh, this is, uh, what was it again, Gra not Granny, Ganny, I'm quickly going to look this up. You guys will probably hear my mouse because my, well, my microphone just picks that up like a crazy thing. A gentry, gentry. Let's just call it a gantry crane, which is accurate for the time period. However, I think these were mostly prevalent in northwestern Europe, but I just like the look of them too much to not use them. And because, well, this is an airship harbor, it still includes ships, so those ships need to be unloaded and also these cranes add a little bit more of like well, life to the place. I um, I think they're also not that piece heavy, or at least this one. I'm going to build a larger version in the next video, which is, uh, well, this one in the end ends up with, um, what is it? Um, two, um, well, wheels. So this one has the smaller wheel on top, which actually, you know, makes whatever you're lifting pull up or fall down on well, a fall down but you know what I mean and then it has a uh, well uh, wheel on the side which let's say a person can walk in or you know make it so that the other wheel pulls things up and pulls or drops things down the larger one that I intend to build in the next video has three wheels in a way like this wheel or at least uh, this one, as, as I said, the wheel on top, which actually lifts and does the actual, well, work. Well, not the actual work, because the lift uh, or the wheel on the side of this uh, gantry crane. I need to say that at least five times, but the wheel on top lifts stuff, but then the wheel that this gantry crane has, is going to have on the side 
is where the actual like manpower gets involved. You can put a horse or an ox in there. This one probably not because it's too small. So this one will be manpowered. But uh, yeah, I also was for a long time searching for a hook so that there's like something at the end of the rope actually, you know, to make it look real. <laughs> but um, in the end, I didn't find anything. So I'm going to search a little bit longer. Also, I did think of like, oh, do I need to make the rope go to the actual back section or do I want it to go over the wheel and then drop? In the end, I wanted to make it go to the complete back. And then, uh, yeah, I pulled, put just a little bit of like a s flower sack, I would say, just to look at like, yes, this thing really needs to only lift heavy loads because that flower sack just looked really tiny compared to it. And then this isn't the small or the biggest one that I'm going to build. As I said before, I'm going to build one that's bigger. This is the smaller one. So, uh, yeah. And there's the wheel that some unfortunate fellow will have to walk in daily. I mean, that person is going to not require any trips to the gym. I mean, he's constantly just walking in that place. Also, I needed to make a way like the upper wheel, which actually lifts and, well, drops things, is connected to the middle. But of course, because the original intent for this wheel is to have a person inside, you couldn't have like a bar in the middle because then it wasn't able to be walked in. This one is connected to the outside and it might be a little bit more... Uh, well, I thought of adding two wheels to this one, or at least three wheels, but... Uh, this being the smaller one, it's going to only have one. So it's going to be maybe a little bit side heavy. But what it makes it an actual country or gentry, let's just say country crane, is that it basically can be moved around. So this one can rotate because of the lower part where you could see like the actual crane is basically on a platform and then it can be rotated. I actually made a beam stick out in the back so that you could like rotate it by hand i mean this is useful because i mean you know the ship is not going to always be straight in front of the crane here you will see me figure out how can i make something look like a hook or something but yeah i don't figure that out by the end it's just going to be a rope on the end with nothing attached to it but anyway so that's it for this video I hope you can understand that Sunday there won't be any videos. So anyway, again, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, I hope to see you back in the next one. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more. And I wish you all an amazing day. Bye bye.